Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today we have one of our podcast queens on the show. She has her own podcast on The Advisor, and she's part of our podcast community, and she is a female entrepreneur, and she does coaching, business coaching, and she has some great techniques and tools to help people build their business. And today she's on the show, and we're going to do a recap of all the different things we've been talking about that really have changed um, business owners and help people grow and elevate to new levels. So Shauna Lynn, tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what we're going to be talking about today. Thanks, Stacy. Yeah. So Shauna Lynn Simon, and I've been an entrepreneur for going on 16 years now. I've operated multi highly successful businesses. Uh, and I've over the years developed a lot of strategies uh, somewhat out of necessity. I think that's kind of the mother of all invention, of course, is necessity. And I've I've had some ups and downs in both personal wellness as well as in my business. And over the years, I've I've learned how to combat uh, one of the biggest challenges I think that entrepreneurs face and female entrepreneurs especially, which is burnout. After suffering from burnout myself and taking three years to recover, um, I've developed strategies for how to better manage my time. I, I was dealing with uh, adrenal fatigue and so I only had a few hours every day to spend on my business. So I really wanted to make the most of those things. And so I managed to continue to grow and build my business even while, while battling an illness. So um, I've learned a lot over the years and I now work with other female entrepreneurs to help them to do the same thing, to help them to build their empire on their terms. And, and in all honesty, you know what, Stacey, I think probably one of the biggest things that uh, I find when, we're, when I'm working with my clients uh, whether it's through my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs or the group coaching program that I have is I get them to this point where they're like, I love my business again. Mm -hmm. And usually when they come to me, they are either on the verge of burnout or already burning out. And, uh, you know, we talked about this in one of the first episodes that we did. One of the challenges with burnout is it's one of those things that you aren't mm -hmm. aware of it. You don't pay attention to preventing it until it's too late until you're already on the verge of it. And so unfortunately, that's the way that most of my clients come to me. And so when you're feeling burnt out, you're feeling very lethargic about a lot of things. You, you've you got a bit of a disassociation to things. You're isolating yourself more and you're not getting the same joy out of out of what you do every day. Yeah. And so there's, there's nothing more satisfying to me than taking these women and bringing them back to their roots of why they got started in the first yeah. place and helping them to build the business they originally set out to build. Right. Uh, because I think that what happens to a lot of us, I was guilty of it at one point as well. Like I've, I had some clear direction always in my business, but there were times where I definitely found myself, I veered off course. I let someone else sort of dictate what direction I was going and take the reins a little bit, pull me outside of where I was intending to go. And so when we take a step back, we refocus ourselves, recalibrate a little bit, um, really get clarity on our vision of where we're going. It's so much easier to make decisions that we feel will bring the business forward, but they're also decisions based on things that we actually want to do, not yeah. just things that we feel like we should be doing. So um, so yeah, that was a very long answer to your question of what I do, but essentially I help women to take that chaos, organize it in a way that helps them to feel empowered and really, really fall in love with their business again. I love it. You know, I, I feel like it, it's something that everybody goes through in life because when, when as a female entrepreneur, I, I see that nobody really works in a, an eight hour day or a six hour day. You know, it's like you're, you know, I, I start early in the morning and sometimes I don't even realize and it's, it's already seven, eight, sometimes that I would go yeah. through later than that. You know, like it was just like, I, I had an obsession of succeeding and I just wanted to succeed. Mm. And I felt like I had a list of things that I needed to accomplish and how many times I overdid it, you know, and I, I put myself in that predicament where I started to feel out the, the burnout, you know, symptoms. And I, I started to, you know, and a couple of times I fell into that hole, but it was like, it was a, a feeling of trying to prove that I could, 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 see, could uh, succeed as a woman entrepreneur and get to the level that I had in my brain, yeah. you know, I think we all have that, that vision of what we want to do and where we want to be. And sometimes, you know, it's realistic. Sometimes it's not. And I think what, I think the first step, I think a lot of women have to do is just take, break things up. Like you were talking about time management in one of your, yeah. your 
episodes and and really look at things realistically and prioritize in our time because you know it's great to have high goals but things don't happen overnight and we shouldn't try mm-hmm. to do it all at once, you know? And it's like, you know, <laughs> so true. Well, it's so true. I mean, like, and you're talking about, yeah, what working some of these long hour days and don't get me wrong. If you've got, you know, a really special project or a new launch coming up or something like it's understandable. You're probably going to put in a few extra hours and probably honestly, gladly, like you're excited about it. So yeah. you're just all revved up. You got all these ideas in your head. And so you put in the extra hours uh, but the reality is though that like, if you took a look at your daily to-do list mm-hmm. and put an estimated amount of time next to it. So yeah. for me on an average day, my to-do list usually has approximately anywhere from 15 to 25 items on it. Mm-hmm. And that might sound like a lot, but some of those are 15 minute items. Yes. So that's not that big of a deal, but others are like two, three hour items. I'm not intending to complete those items that day. I'm just looking to get certain aspects of them. So I break them down into smaller little chunks because mm-hmm. the reality is if you take a look at your to-do list each day, you do a lot of time next to it. I mean, if you've got four tasks that take 15 minutes, there's an hour of your so-called eight hour day gone. Yeah. And now you're going to check emails for an hour and you've got to have lunch at some point in there. And now you're going to take a phone call from one of your team members for 30 minutes. And like, it's amazing how quickly that time gets eaten away. So yeah. Um, and it's actually funny. So I've actually, uh, got a new lead, uh, a, a new guide that, um, I've, I'm in the process of creating. I will share the link with you because I don't have it hundred percent set up yet, but, yes. uh, it's all about time blocking. It's a seven day time blocking challenge, because this is one of the things that I teach a lot of the clients to do is time management is a time blocking yeah. where you actually dedicate, okay, I'm going to spend three hours working on this and I'm going to spend an hour working on this. And by doing that, it allows you to set more realistic goals about what you're actually going to accomplish. Because if you just look at your to-do list at the beginning of the day, you're like, oh yeah, I can get these 40 items done today. (laughs) But if you added, if you put a time to all those items, no, no, you're not. So, you know, you've got to really prioritize which are the items I really want to get done. We talked about that on one of the episodes, find your top three items, put them on a little cheat sheet, whether it's a whiteboard or on your screensaver or on a post-it note or whatever you need to do, but have those three items as your, these are the three things that if I do nothing else today, I'm going to get these three items done and then keep coming back to that list when you get veered a little bit off track. But, um, you know, there, there's a lot of unpredictability to being an entrepreneur. I don't think our days ever go exactly as we plan, especially because like you were saying how you got all these ideas and all these things that you want to do to succeed. Like we're squirrely. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) if I just do this one more thing and, oh, I saw so-and-so did this and that looked like that was pretty good. So I should probably do that, but, oh, I'm going to change it this way. And then I saw this other thing over here and like, it's easy for us to get so distracted and go off on tangents. And that, that task that you thought it was going to take 15 minutes led to you creating six more tasks to do out of it. So, you know, being, having a way to pull yourself up. pulling yourself back when you need, when you need to, to kind of keep yourself on track. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we also talked about, you know, we're like you said, we're going to work those long days. I think to say that you're going to, you know, yes, we would all love the four hour work week, but mm-hmm. let's be realistic. Most of us are, it's not attainable for, or, or realistic at all for most of our businesses, but yeah, you can certainly set guidelines and you can say that you only want to work three or four hours each day. And, and, and that's fantastic. But the reality is that there's going to be a lot of days that are going to be longer days. Yeah. So ensuring that you have the practices in place to protect yourself, your health, your well-being. So eating, don't skip meals. Yeah. And don't eat, and meal in bar form is not sustainable for meals. Like, don't get me wrong, there are days where I'm like, I ate all my meals in bar form today. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Uh, but that should not be the norm necessarily. That's not, it's not sustainable, you know? So uh, ensuring that you have nutritious snacks, ensuring that you have well-prepared nutritious meals available, ensuring that you're taking breaks to whether it's a mental break, a physical break, moving around, stretching, whatever it is that you need to do to relax your mind, meditate, journal, you know, there's all sorts of different tools and techniques we've talked about in this series that uh, you know, really help us to protect our our overall health and our mental well being to allow us to be able to work those longer days when we need to. Yeah, I just don't want anyone making that the everyday. 
Yeah. You know? And I think you made a good point because I think the first thing we have to do is protect our mental health. Because if we, we, you know, if we don't protect our mental health, we're not going to be able to focus. We're not going to have no. the clarity. We're not going to be able to accomplish the goals. Because when you're so clouded and your mind is just like not there, how much do you really get done that day? You know, because you're. Oh, yeah. Not to mention your capacity for decision making is going to be yes. compromised. You just don't have the cognitive ability. You don't have the bandwidth to properly evaluate decisions. Yeah. Uh, I will say that when I've got one of those, like, I don't quite know what to do with this kind of things on my mind. Yeah. And especially on a busy day where I'm like, I don't have the time just to sit down and figure this out. I go for a walk. Yeah. I almost always get my answer on a walk. So mm -hmm. it goes to show that when you let your mind sit at rest for a bit, mm -hmm. it's amazing what you can come up with. If you can't go for a walk, maybe on if you're driving to an appointment, don't listen to any music. Don't listen to a podcast. Don't not that I don't want you to listen to podcasts because yes, podcasts are <laughs> wonderful. But <laughs> sometimes it's better just to leave yourself with your own thoughts and let your yeah. mind kind of wander. And it's amazing the the re revelations that you can have uh, when you're in those moments. I feel like a lot of times my the answers that I needed came when I was just around quietness and peacefulness mm -hmm. and I love how you say going for a walk because they so many people recommend that some people will even you know if they're in a in a park or a nice area they'll take their shoes off and they'll just feel the grass on their yeah. feet and with between the the the, the, the uh, peaceful peacefulness around them and maybe maybe just you know maybe hearing the birds and mm -hmm. you know things start to change and the stress starts to be relieved and and oh yeah and it's just like a whole new impact it's like a it's like being re-energized all over again. Absolutely. And I, I will say I walk all year round, um, but I definitely get out for more walks in, you know, the nicer weather, spring, yeah. summer, fall. Uh, but I do enjoy a, a lovely crisp winter walk when I'm bundled up properly for it, seeing right. all the fresh snow on the ground. I mean, I, I do and very much enjoy that. Um, and I will say that there are some days even where I'm like, you should go for a walk. And I'm like, I don't feel like going for a walk. And I have this whole conversation with myself. <laughs> And I've never regretted going for a walk. Yeah. Uh, you know, like it's just, it's, it's so, there's such a release to just spending that 20 minutes. So even if it's not about coming up with a decision or something, just the way that I can reapproach my work when I come back from that walk, yeah. I'm always in a better mood. And listen, if you've got staff, your staff will thank you for it. If you, if yeah. you take that break, it's amazing how much clarity you can get just by allowing yourself that break that, especially if you work from home, get out of the house. Like you spend too much yeah. time there as it is, you know, get out of the house. Exactly. Um, you know, I think we might've talked about this on another episode as well. Another thing to do is even just change up your work environment, go to, go to your local coffee shop. And, you know, I call it my satellite office and I don't, I, I'll admit, I don't do it nearly as often as I probably should mainly because yeah. I got a nice, I got a nice setup with the whole dual monitor thing. Like <laughs> the there are certain things that, yeah. Like if I can just take my laptop, just go and sit at a coffee shop or something and, yeah. you know, just change up the environment. Sometimes it's not such a bad thing. Yeah. No, it definitely isn't. You know, change is good. You know, some people don't like change, but it's nice to change things up a little bit. And I mm -hmm. think it's, it's, it's more of a, it's refreshing, you know, and I sometimes, you know, I, I created my, my, my studio and my office to be a certain way because I, it just makes me feel a certain, you know, I, I made it to feel more, a little bit more, not on the meditation side of it, but just very, Asian and and zen. Eastern yeah and so like then perfect yeah and so mm. it's like so it's like a relaxed relaxing atmosphere but sometimes I have to push myself to get out and do some work other places and when I do that yeah. it feels good because as soon as I breathe the fresh air of outside and I start to you know just you know just walk around and just be somewhere else I start, I start to feel better because it's not, it's not healthy just to be in your office all the time. And Agreed. especially nowadays with people with COVID, a lot of people work at home. It's not good mm -hmm. to always be in the house, in the house, exactly. you know, you have to like get out, you know, and, and just do something different, you know, and you could still yeah. accomplish the same amount of things too, you know, oh, absolutely. Like I can't wait for the weather to really be nice enough to properly set up my outdoor patio. I've got yeah. a lovely like sofa set out there with a nice umbrella so that I don't get the glare on the computer. But I mean, like just to have my feet in the sun, yes. to be lounging, just enjoying 
the nice warm weather. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, definitely something that I miss having been in an area where I experienced all four seasons and winter being the longest one. I yes. very much look forward to that season. 100%. But, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but like I said, all year round, I'm getting out though, just breathing in the fresh air. It just, it's like a hidden, a reset button for me. And I also understand that that might not be for everyone. So maybe that's not what you need. Maybe it's a matter of even just going and sitting in your living room yeah. on, on the sofa, maybe burning, burning a candle or some essential oils. Uh, you know, what we talked about evoking the senses is a great way to alleviate stress. And we also talked about how I recommend doing it, not just when you are stressed, doing it when you're not stressed, mm. practicing stress management. This is a habit that should be built yes. and should be practiced when you're not stressed. So that when you are stressed, you can call on every one of those tools yes. when you actually need them because now they're muscle memory. So anything that you can do on a daily basis to evoke your senses, your sense of smell, your touch, your sight, your sound, you know, making sure that you are breathing it all in and taking a moment to reflect and just be grateful for, for all the things. And that also helps, especially on a very stressful day. If you're like, okay, I'm grateful for, you yes. know, like, like my team and I, we share, we do a daily stand up every day yeah. um, in our Slack channel. We talk about our wins and our challenges and there's nothing that hurts my heart more than when I see, you know, someone's posting win, not applicable. Like I don't, ha I didn't have one today. You know, that's yeah. really tough. And it's very, very rare that that happens because by doing these standups, it forces us to say, well, what was my win today? Even if it was a small win, that small yeah. win might've been like, you know what? My Amazon delivery came. It made me happy. <laughs> like whatever. You know? Exactly. Exactly. But taking that moment to reflect on that. Yeah. And I think gratitude is so important because I think we lose sometimes gratitude for the little things and we're so hard on ourselves. I feel, I don't know if oh. it's just because we're, we're female entrepreneurs or if it's everybody, maybe it's probably, that. you know, I just, you know, I had, a, you know, I worked really hard and I, I did, I got a lot of things accomplished, but I still was hard on myself. I'm like, didn't get to do this and I didn't accomplish this. And I, yeah. you know, I wanted to do this and it didn't turn out like this. And then, you know, and, and someone else I work with looks at me and like, you're doing amazing, you know, and they're like, <laughs> you know, but it's like, we're, we're so critical of our own selves, you know, it's just like, you know, it's like, I don't know why, but I, I find myself sometimes I'm my worst critic, you know, is my, myself, you know, and I don't give myself, it's, you know, I don't give myself enough of credit. And I guarantee you, there are hundreds and hundreds of women just like me out there that we don't give ourselves enough of credit for. And I think we should always pat ourselves on the back. And it's funny because mm -hmm. I write about this in my book. I should follow my own information. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Do as I say, not as I do. But yeah, yeah no, I think sometimes, sometimes I, I admit I have, a, I, I'm challenged to follow my own advice sometimes. And I love when I check myself, I'm like, oh, someone wise once said this, right. That was me. I should probably <laughs> actually do that. But, uh, but you hit the nail on the head though. Like I think that as women, especially we are, constantly looking, we're, we're such high achievers. We're constantly looking at the goals and we're not celebrating all the wins along the way. We're not celebrating those milestones. You know, yeah. we've got this, this big overarching, you know, there's never an end in sight. We're never ending things. We're just constantly growing and achieving more and, yeah. and working on that next step. So we do have to take a moment to reflect on where we're at, what we've done. Yeah. And even if like, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know, things aren't going quite right in my life right now. I, you know, my business isn't the success that I want it to be, or my, my marriage isn't what I wanted it to be, or mm -hmm. I'm struggling to, with, uh, you know, other personal relationships, or, you know, you, maybe you've experienced a, a tragedy or a loss recently. And, you know, you're just, you're, you're struggling right now saying like, I'm not in a good place. Yeah. You know, I think no matter where you're at, I can promise you that there's something to be celebrated. Yeah. And I think that taking that moment to find that gratitude and find that piece of this is what I want to celebrate today, um, yeah. you know, no matter how big or small it is, mm -hmm. it's amazing how you can build on that. Yes. There really is a compound effect to that where you're going to keep building on that. Yeah. And each day gets a little bit easier to find something positive. And not only that, you won't have to look for it as hard because positive things really will be happening for you. Yes. Um, I talked previously about how my car was vandalized a few mm -hmm. months back. And, uh, when I was taking it in for its repair, I had to wait a little while for the estimate and everything else. And there was another gentleman there 
And he kept just, everything was negative to him. He was complaining about the weather and complaining about the car and the Wi-Fi doesn't work and all these different things he was complaining about and everything that he threw at me. I was like, well, at least, and I would give like some sort of silver lining. And he finally called me out on it. He's like, is this just how you are? I said, yeah, I, I just can't allow myself to be in this state of, you know, woe is me. The world yeah. has fallen apart. And, but this is a muscle I have practiced for so long. Yeah. It's just habit now. So yeah. if you are someone where you're like, well, that's you, I'm never going to be that positive person. Well, if you say that, of course, you're not ever going to be that positive person. Right. But again, practice it every day. Find those silver lines, find those wins, find what you're grateful for and celebrate yeah. them. And I got to tell you, I did the same thing. I was always like, you know, years ago, I was like, oh, pity me, poor me. I called the pity party. And then, you know, so then one day, um, you know, this goes back to when I was my, I had my chronic illness was really bad. And so then I was, um, they could not find a medication or a solution to help me. So, you know, it was always like, poor me, poor me, da, 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 angry at the world. And then I had to go and they put me on a, in a trial group. And they wanted to try this new medication that they haven't been approved yet. And then I saw the worst case scenarios. And I looked wow. at myself and I said, you know what? I'm actually, I, I have gratitude. I, you know what? Thank God I have it just the way it is. You know, I may not be perfect, but when you see other people in the world that have it yeah. so much worse than yourself, then you start to realize that, you know what, no matter what happens in our lives, whether it be at work, in our personal lives, you know, there's people out there that have it much worse. So we should really have gratitude for the good things in our life and everything. And you can, every negative thing that happens in our lives, I guarantee you can pull out something positive Absolutely. if you really choose. And I think that's the mentality that a lot of women should have. Well, and, you know, here's a story that I, I would like to share as well, because I think that you bring up a really good point there. And it's not to say that if, if you're going through something, you are allowed to feel sorry for yourself. Just to be mm -hmm. clear, you are absolutely allowed to feel sorry for yourself. And uh, for myself, I have always been able to see that someone else is worse off than me. So my dad has MS, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. He has no mobility now. Mm -hmm. um, this has been a progression of over 20 years where, you know, he started walking with a cane to a wheelchair to just like little by little to the point where he has no mobility. We, we have to help him with absolutely everything mm -hmm. from scratching his nose to feeding him to you name it. You know, yeah. he doesn't have any control over his own body. So I live with this every day when I'm not feeling my best though. Yes. I have this reminder that I can snap myself out of it. That like, you know, there is someone who's worse off, but it doesn't mean that I don't allow myself my little pity party. I just can't stay there. Yeah. I remember talking to my dad about this years ago. And I will say this too, despite my dad's condition, he sees people as being worse off than he is. He yeah. looks at it as, well, he has the financial stability to be able to afford to be able to manage his disability, whereas other people may not have some of the resources that he has. Yeah. They have benefits that have helped to pay for uh, you know, a lot of his medication, a lot of his mobility devices and things like that. So right. there's, you know, he's got a lot of opportunities there. So I talked to him, this was many, many, many years ago, back when you know, had, hadn't progressed quite to the state that it's at now. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely see that, you know, it, it was very frustrating. I would say for me to watch that, like, here's this man who used to be, you know, super strong and, and able to do anything for himself. And now, you know, he's, he's bound to a wheelchair. I said, dad, like, how do you do it? Like, mm. how do you, you always have such a positive attitude. How do you do it? And he said, well, every day I give myself 15 minutes to feel sorry for myself because he does want to allow himself that, you know, right. so 15 minutes a day, I can feel sorry for myself. But when that 15 minutes is up, it's time to get on with the rest of the day. You can't stay there. I and like that. Like, I don't bank it. So if I don't use my 15 minutes today, I don't get to save it for tomorrow. And bank <laughs> it for the next day, you know, like it's, it's 15 minutes a day That's and true. giving yourself that permission, whether it's 15 minutes, like maybe you want to give yourself more time, less time, whatever that looks like for you, but yeah. allow yourself that time. But when you set some boundaries around it to say, yeah. I can't stay here, I can't live here. Yeah. There's something so healthy about that because yeah, I think that there are times where we do need to allow ourselves just a moment of being frustrated. Right. I had, um, I sprained both my shoulders at one time. 
And this was after I had finished dealing with my burnout, adrenal fatigue, three-year recovery. I'm finally recovered. I got the, the green light. I'm allowed to work out again. And I've sprained both my shoulders. And so now I'm still not working out, of course. <laughs> And so frustrated and like everything that I, anytime I tried to pick up a grocery bag, anything, daily, regular daily activities were just excruciating for me. Yeah. So challenging. And I would complain to my dad about it. And then I would say to him, like, well, I don't have any right to complain to you about this. Like, I mean, look what you're dealing with. And he's like, it's not a competition. You're allowed <laughs> to feel sorry for yourself. You know, you just can't live there, though. Like, it's not to say that you can't, yeah. you can't have those moments, you know. Um, and I appreciated that, that just because he was in the state that he was in didn't mean that I wasn't allowed to vent to him. Right. And, you know, and I can complain, like I'm a runner. I, I complain if, if the rain prevented me from running that day Yeah. and as much as like, yeah, he's definitely not going for any runs. He appreciates that. It's something that's frustrating for me. Yeah. And, but again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay in that. Oh, I didn't get for my run today. No, I, I got another workout instead. I figured something out, you know, like we make yeah. it work, but um, yeah, I think that that's probably one of the most valuable life lessons I think that I've ever learned. And it's to me, the silver lining that I see from what my dad has gone through is I think there's actually a ton of them for me, the yeah. lessons I've learned from how he's managed it. But aside from that, I've gotten to know the MS community locally and become really close with them and, you know, met some amazing people through that. I've learned more about accessibility and universal design as, you know, mm -hmm. someone who has a background in interior design, I was able to design a condo for my parents that's fully accessible for my dad. And, you know, having that knowledge, having that experience and being able to translate that to my clients now. Yeah. Uh, and aside from even just my clients, just everyday people. Right. When I encounter someone with accessibility needs. I can naturally navigate it in a way that if someone didn't have that experience in their life they may not be as natural about it yeah you know it's something that just comes very easily for me so I see that as such a gift that I've been given yeah. that not a lot of people get that opportunity to have so I'm fortunate again not necessarily the way that I would have liked to get it mind yeah. you I mean yeah there's a there's a lot of things that you know I wish would could be different but Man, it's been such a blessing, I would say, to have had this opportunity to to learn some different things. And like I said, the lessons that my dad has provided me with are are pretty powerful. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And I love how he 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 gives the suggestion, you're entitled to your 15 minutes. Yeah. And you know, when I think about it, there are times when I was just like cry or just like really get upset. And then after I felt better because I let it's it a out. Release. It's yeah. a relief. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and when you mentioned about being around the MS community and how it's changed you, I thought to myself, you know what, I can, I can relate to that because like when I, you know, I spent my time around the, the disability community, you know, it mm -hmm. made me look at people differently. Like I no longer looked at a human being just like as a human being. Like I saw, I saw people with a different pair of eyes and I had yeah. empathy for everyone and I could, I could relate and, and, and have compassion towards everybody. And, and. I don't, I don't think I would have been like that if I wasn't exposed to the disabilities community, you know, and what yeah. stuff I went through, you know, so I feel like everything happens for a reason in our journey in life. And like, we shouldn't, even as entrepreneurs, not, you know, beat ourselves over the head because things don't, you know, aren't perfect. You know, I think everything happens for a reason and we can take all these things, we can use them to make ourselves better. Exactly. Yeah. No. And I think that, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be someone else who is going through a different journey and it doesn't make, again, one's not worse than another necessarily, but exactly. when you, when you get a chance to really see that and really see it through those, you know, that different lens, uh, you get to understand that everyone has a story and it's not, it's not our job to pretend that we even know what it is. You know, yeah. this is, this is the journey that each one of us is on our own journey. And I mean, we can look around and say, well, none of these people know what my journey is. None of these people know what I've been through. Right. I can remember when I had shingles, this is going back to 2017. This is what sent me into the state of burnout and everything else. Well, sorry, burnout gave me shingles. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> I got shingles because I was burnt out. Yeah. And it was a tailspin after that, a three-year massive, uh, you know, depletion and, and recovery. Yeah. Uh, but I can remember when I, when the shingles were full blown, it was June. So pretty hot that month. Uh, and I would go to the grocery store in long sleeves and long pants because I didn't want anyone to see what I was dealing with. Yeah. And I can remember, you know, walking to the store and this was, it was 
painful for me to wear clothes. Let's just yeah. say like it was yeah. it, the, the shingles rash. You just, you don't even want to touch it. And so wearing a, an article of clothing over top of it was just excruciating, but I needed yeah. groceries. And this was before the day of, this is back in 2017, grocery delivery wasn't what it is today at all. Not in my area anyway. Yeah. So I had, if I needed groceries, I needed to go to the grocery store. Right. And I can just remember walking around the store and looking at people and thinking like, I've got tears in my eyes. I've, I just got to get through this. And I'm thinking no one here has a clue how much pain I'm in because yeah. to them, I looked normal. Yeah. Like, yeah, they might've thought it was a little odd that I was wearing long sleeves in the middle of June. Right. But overall I looked normal to them. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that we underestimate. Like you just never know you never that know. person that's standing in line next to you could have just lost their, their partner the day before. Yeah. Like you, you never know what you someone never else know. is going through. So, yeah. And I, that's why I always say, I think we always, we always should show everybody respect and we shouldn't yeah. be so, you know, so many people, you know, burst out at others that they don't even know. And they, they, you know, the, or they have a lack of respect and they say things they really shouldn't say to another human being, but you never know what that person's going through in their life. You never know what level of vulnerability they're at, you, you know, and you really, you know, when, when we say things verbally to other people or we act a certain way, we should think before we react or, or how we say things. And when you, when you bring up like, you know, shingles and how, you know, how, how your low, low immune system kind of brought shingles into your life, you know, that's another thing about, you know, burnout and, you know, is that when you work so hard and you just like burn yourself out, you physically, you, you break the walls in your immune system down and yeah. it's basically like open the doors and say, here I am. Who Come on in. Come yep. on in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the thing is like, I'm the kind of person, like, I don't even get a common cold most of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always had a really strong immune system. So for me to be so depleted, that shingles was like, hello, yeah. <laughs> we're taking over now. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, uh -huh. You know, it was definitely very eye opening for me, I would say. Um, and yeah, like I've barely even had a cold since then. I did get COVID once, I'll admit, like that, yeah. that did happen, you know. Um, but yeah, overall, I've got a pretty strong immune system. So um, it says something about your lifestyle, what you're doing. And it, and it did make me um, take a whole different look at things that. I swore to myself that once I was recovered and I believed I would recover. I think that was also key. I did believe I would recover. Yeah. Uh, that's the only way I was able to keep fighting for it. Because like you, like you were saying, when you were dealing with what you get, went through, you know, you're in like this state of depression, you're in this, you know, woe is me kind of place, but you were determined as well not to stay there. Yeah. You have to keep up that fight. And I was determined to recover. And I swore to myself that once I recovered, that I would never let myself get to that point ever yes. again. And mm -hmm. I've, I've worked really, really hard to ensure that, but I've, I've realized that I've created these strategies. I've developed these tools and these resources all while still building my business, all while growing my business. And I've proven that, you know, you don't have to kill yourself to be a success. Exactly. And so I share those with others. And I, you know, I want to help to empower others to be able to do the same thing because women, especially we just, we've got something to prove and we're, we push things further and harder and we don't take a moment to stop and think about what's best for us. Yeah. You know, we're so busy taking care of everybody else that, Oh, wait a minute. What, what should I be doing to yeah. really nurture my body and to value what I've got going on here? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, I feel like a lot of women, especially we, a lot of us have grown to be nurturers, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. in us, you know, and when we see people in need or we see something that ha needs to be addressed, we, you know, a, a lot of women have that personality and those characteristics where they'll just jump out of their shell and, and just help that other person or, you know, even an animal or a cat, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's we just... see anything in need. We're like, oh, we're here. Let me help you. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you I've definitely been that person who's pulled over on the side of the road because I saw someone slip and fall and like, oh, let me help you up. Or, I mean, there was a car accident in front of my house last week and took a picture. I'm like, I am that person who just happens to have pylons handy when there's a car accident in front of her house. <laughs> because I'm like, let me just help you. I got all the things I need, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that as women, like you said, we're, it's, it's just a part of who we are. And this is not to say that men don't have the same sort of, yes. uh, you know, feelings and tendencies. Don't get me wrong, but, um, women, we have this special built in maternal, like I'm not even a mom and I can't even explain the maternal feelings that I feel when I see 
someone, especially someone who's younger, especially yeah. someone who I feel, you know, isn't being given the supports that they need. And you just want to take them in and protect them and just yeah. put a little bubble around them, you know, exactly. um, that's great. But are you putting a bubble around yourself at all? Like, mm-hmm. you know, we've got to, we've really got to protect ourselves and, you know, there's a number of ways to do it. Just kind of like recap some of the things that we've talked about on the show, but yeah, you know, you want to make sure that you are eating well, you want to make mm-hmm. sure that you are uh, maintain a healthy level of activity. You want to ensure that you are practicing stress management. Um, you want to make sure that you are hydrating your body. Like, yeah, all these things take a little bit of focus and energy and whatnot. But if you aren't doing these things for yourself, you're, how can you take care of anybody else? Exactly. Exactly. And I, so, I think so many people forget that, you know, and they keep taking care of everybody else. But so many people I've talked to, I don't know if you've come across this with your clients, they feel guilty. Like, yep. if, you know, they have like this guilt where, you know, they feel like they have to put others first and they, they don't realize that they have to give themselves a little self-love and self-care before they take and take care of anybody else around them. Oh yeah. If I hear, I can't do that. You don't understand. There's no way. I have to do this. I have to do that. And uh, yeah, if you, if you change that, I have to, to, I get to think about the things, what would you actually be doing with that, with that time? And right. you know, we talked about this previously as well. Just sometimes the right answer is just to say no to certain things uh, because there are people who are legitimately relying on you. There are things that are not negotiable that really do need to get done. And yeah. Frankly, if you don't do them, probably nobody else will, you know, there are, there are certain, there are people that are relying on you and, you know, you want to be the best mom, daughter, sister, you know, friend, you want to partner, you want to be all the best things of yourself, all the best versions of yourself. But uh, what version do you give yourself in the end? You know, and, you know, thinking about the way that we treat ourselves, how would we feel if we saw someone else being treated the way that we're treating ourselves? Right. We would immediately want to protect them. We would immediately want to help them. Right. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take that moment and help ourselves? Same way with, you know, if we spoke to someone else, the way that we speak to ourselves sometimes, I mean, we can be our own worst critics. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I've always had a really healthy mindset, healthy confidence overall, but man, I've had my moments where I have to, you know, remind myself that the way that I'm speaking to myself is not fair. And, you know, love yourself a little bit. Exactly. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't reflect on, you know, mistakes made and have some regrets and, and course correct and learn from those. But yeah, yeah, we have to, you know, we can't beat ourselves up and not everything is our fault either. Right. Um, exactly. I agree. And I think, I think you made a really good point earlier on. You said that, you know, we have to practice, you know, reducing our stress every day. It should be like a, you know, part of our lifestyle because so many people don't practice stress relief until they're under stress, you know? Right. Yeah. And then your body just can't handle it. I mean, I actually had uh, I had a physical today at the doctor's office and I was told, you know, I'm in great shape and my heart looks good and all these things look great. I'm like, well, yeah, it should be. I mean, I practice this every single day. So. Exactly. But, you know, the reality is that like even on my most, it doesn't mean I don't get stressed just because I practice this every day doesn't mean I don't get stressed. But it's amazing how quickly I can switch from being stressed to taking action on the things that I can control because I practice this on a daily basis. And one of my clients recently was telling me about situation that she was dealing with. And she went from, you know, kind of the night before was sort of panic mode and was having a bit of an emotional response to things and worked through some things, talked through it with her partner. And when I'm speaking to her the next morning, she's like, yeah, so here's my plan. I got this and this and this, and I decided to do this. And I, I made this decision. And I said to him, like, are you taking a moment to really acknowledge what an amazing thing you've done here? Yeah. Like you have, you went from being completely stressed out less than 12 hours ago to having this full action plan and feeling at peace. Yeah. That is your stress management at work. Yeah. And imagine, imagine what your life would be like if your thoughts were not so consumed by stress. Right. Because that's the problem sometimes when, when we let stress in is it takes over, it takes yeah. over our thoughts. It, it's crippling. Yes. And imagine how much more you could do if you could turn that stress into action Yes. so that you can move forward. 
you know, and some days are going to be harder than others. Don't get me wrong. Some right. stressful situations are really stressful yeah. and they're going to take a little extra focus from us sometimes, but having those tools in place, it's amazing what it can do to alter our thinking, to alter our path and to allow us to live a healthy and fulfilling life. Yeah. And I feel like I, I love meditation and I, I need to do it more often, but you know, it's mm -hmm. like when I do it, I just feel enlightened. I feel like, like, like a brick has been lifted off my shoulder, you know, and it makes me more in tune with myself when I, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, people can cooperate, you know, and, and you know what, when we're walking in and walking in, in nature and when we're doing other stuff, those are forms of meditation. You don't have to Absolutely. be sitting on the ground and you don't have to be going, um, you know, and closing your eyes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it, yeah. It's not, it's not what you think it is. Yeah. You know what? I always suggest if you haven't done meditation before, find a guided meditation Yeah. and you utilize that, especially for the first couple of times, you know, uh, it helps you with your visualization. Uh, and you might just always do guided meditations, or you might find ways to meditate on your own, but the, the clarity you can get yeah. from meditation, I'll admit that meditation to your point, it's a practice that, yeah, like I, I should probably be doing more of it. You know, it's one thing that I just haven't fully built that habit up. Yeah. I've done it. Uh, and again, I feel great when I do it, but I haven't fully built it up. Right. Um, and it's something that, yeah, that might be one of the next habits that I, that I work to build. I will say this though, too, if you're looking to build healthy habits and stress management habits, like step-by-step step, start small, don't try mm -hmm. to like completely alter your life tomorrow. Yeah. But maybe the next time that you're feeling down on yourself, remember what you heard here and, you know, use that as your trigger to say, oh, okay. I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and let myself feel sorry for myself for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to focus on gratitude. And that right there is just one small shift. And is it going to be easy the first time? No, but it does get easier each time that you, that you practice it. And yeah. it doesn't mean that you won't take five more 15 minutes that day to feel sorry for yourself. You might, and yeah. that's okay too. Again, you're building that, that muscle, but little by little, step by step, take it small initially, uh, you know, but work to build and incorporate some of these things into your daily routine. I will say that I didn't get all these habits done at once. This has been a cumulative of many, many, many years that I have been working to get to where I am now. Oh, for um, sure. And I continue to practice it every day. Yes. You don't ever stop practicing it. Yes. And I think too, I just want to add positivity is key. You know, people mm -hmm. have to get the negative to negativity out of their life and they really have to focus on positive energy because I think when you're positive, you really focus and look at life differently. And I think a positive energy brings positive things into your life. And yes, you know, and you also Definitely. smile a lot more when you're positive. It's so true. And it's even like they've said, you know, smile when you're talking to someone and you'll feel more upbeat. And it's so yeah. true. Like you feel better if you just smile more and yeah. don't get me wrong, like no one likes like, Hey, smile more, but really <laughs> uh, <laughs> you really do feel better. So, yeah. you know, maybe it's taking a, a quick selfie of yourself smiling and then yeah. you know, being able to look at that, see yourself smiling. That's you a know, great idea. It's, it's really, really powerful. Yeah. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you have to summarize it, summarize it you know, do a couple of little things and talk about <laughs> a million different things today, what yeah. are some things that like important factors, like if you, if that pop into your head right now that you just want to like maybe stress to the listeners? I think just the importance of you, you know, it's main, maintaining a healthy lifestyle and, and really prioritizing yourself and your own self-care and your own self-love and you know, putting yourself ahead of others for once, uh, you know, because we do spend so much time helping other people. It's really time to prioritize yourself. This is going to benefit you both personally and professionally. Uh, it'll help you to, to feel more balanced, to feel more clarity, to make better decisions. You know, all of that comes down to how we treat ourselves every day. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing that I would say out of all of this. And, and to just understand that, you know, burnout is something that we should be working to prevent every day, not just when it's like, when we're in the midst of it, when, yeah. once, once you're, you're in that downward spiral, it's really hard to pull yourself out of it. Yeah. You know? So if we can work on preventing that, you know, there's so much that we can do. And, you know, I, I know that 
it, I, there's things that I've listened to where they're like, oh, you should do this. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't need to worry about that. And then all of a sudden something happens to like, oh, I should probably should have paid attention. And so I'm sure there's probably people listening to this saying like, I don't need to deal with that. Yeah. I've got a healthy mental state. I'm fine. But mm -hmm. trust me when I say that you don't know that you're not fine until you're not fine. So exactly. practice wellness every single day in some way. That's so true. And tell everybody about the services that you provide. Yeah. So I offer business coaching through one-on-one -on -one business coaching, as well as group coaching. So depending on what makes the most sense, of course, for you and your business and where you're at, uh, I'm always happy to have a chat with you. So if you go to aboutshaunalyn.com forward slash the advisor, you can see various resources that I've got there. You can set up a call with me uh, and we can talk and I, you know, it's, um, I've got, I, my, my main focus is working with female entrepreneurs, helping you to organize all that chaos, get clarity on where you're taking your business and help you do it in a way that's sustainable without losing your sanity. Because at the end of the day, building an empire is supposed to be exhilarating, yes. not exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So true. And do you have any special offers? Do you give away anything on your website that you offer to anybody when they go on your website? I have a fantastic time management strategies guide. So if you go to aboutshaunalyn.com forward slash time, you can get my top five time management tips where I will help you to gain an extra 10 hours plus every single week. This is how I get at least an extra 10 hours into my work week. Whenever people are like, how do you do all that you do? There's strategies behind it. So I share my strategies in this free guide. Uh, I will also give you um, the link for the time blocking guide. Uh, the, the website's not up yet, but it will be at aboutshaunalyn.com forward slash time block. So uh, that will be live in the next few days. So check it out. Uh, this is my, it's a seven day time blocking challenge complete with worksheet and everything. The thing's like 14 pages long. Like this is not a small thing. I'm giving it away for free. My uh, my team's kind of like, I we, I feel like we should charge for this, like a small price. I'm like, nope, we're going to give it away. So get it while it's still free because who knows, I might end up having to charge for it at some point. So go to aboutshaunalyn.com forward slash time block. Wow, that's amazing. I'm going to download mm. it. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. I could use an extra 10 hours. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Oh my goodness. Well, like always, Shaunalyn, this has been amazing. And I just love having you on the show. And you Same. totally are a val valuable contribution to our community. So thank you so much for doing all these podcasts with us. I really love all the valuable information. And if you haven't seen Shauna Lynn's previous podcast, go on to her, her podcast. She's um, on The Advisor. She has her own podcast. Look at all her different podcasts that she's done. And you will be amazed at the, the great advice that she has to share. So thank you so much for being here. I love Stacey, having you. Stacey, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for the community as well. I absolutely appreciate all the different insights that, that you bring, not only to these shows, but to all the shows that you do. Uh, I appreciate that you've created this community. So thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of it. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. And you have a great day. Thanks. You as well.